Welcome to Franklin County Home Health Agency's Where the Heart Is. I'm Jennifer DeSablo, your host for today's show. Franklin County Home Health Agency is your local nonprofit home health and hospice organization that has been providing services to people of all ages throughout the 15 cities and towns of Franklin County since 1969. Through this monthly show, we bring you information about the agency's programs and services, as well as helpful mm. tips to help you and your loved ones stay safe and healthy at home. Today, we will be talking about multiple sclerosis. Nash, uh, in March, the, the nation recognizes multiple sclerosis through a National Multiple Sclerosis Month, and the whole month of March is MS Month. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to learn more about the disease and to talk about how home care and hospice can help individuals with MS. So I have two guests with me today. Um, my guests are Dr. Alicia Guilford and Mary Harwood, who is a Community Relations Coordinator at Home Health. And Alicia, you also are a hospice volunteer with the agency and do a lot helping us with event volunteering too. So thank you. Thank you both for being here. Um, before we start talking about that, is there more that you can share with us about yourselves, uh, where you live and how long you've been affiliated with mm -hmm. Home Health? So I have been a hospice volunteer for just over a year. And I now live outside of Franklin County, but just slightly in Cambridge, and still uh, enjoy a lot of uh, time inside yeah. <laughs> the county. It's close enough. Good <laughs> Working neighbors. Working and volunteering. <laughs> yes, like it's only been a year. It's been just a one over a year. Yep, yeah. It has. Oh, thank you. And Mary, how about yourself? Um, I've been with Home Health uh, about five and a half years in this role. Yeah, so it's been a while, yeah. part of the family, I guess. <laughs> Good to have I you. I live in South Hero, so I don't live in, in our service area, but I'm very familiar with the work that the VNA does. Yes, <laughs> yes our sister yeah. agency. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. So let's start off with just the, a general definition of multiple sclerosis, and we can, you know, we'll probably go back and forth between calling it multiple sclerosis and MS as we go forward. So um, right. tell us what is MS. So MS is a chronic, unpredictable, immune-mediated disease process of the central nervous system. So bring that down. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So chronic is a lifelong illness. Um, unpredictable, meaning you don't know what you're going to get from one day to the next. Uh, immune-mediated means that the immune system is involved and uh, the central nervous system means that it's the brain and the spinal cord. Okay. Yes, so it's all over, it can be all over the place, and we'll get to more about that. Um, before we start talking about some of the uh, diagnoses and symptoms, who gets MS? Who is um, susceptible to this disease, and how many people about in the United States? Mm. So uh, more women than men, so a little more than two times uh, women over men get MS, um, but everybody can be uh, susceptible. And uh, there are children who live with MS, so um, eight to 10,000 kids. There are approximately 2.3 million people in the world. And uh, for whatever reason, we still don't know why, but there's a higher per capita rate in Vermont. Really? Uh, there's some thought that it's uh, environmental mm -hmm. uh, because we live farther from the equator. Oh. Uh, but it's only partially true because our friends and neighbors in Maine don't have as high a rate as we do. Yeah. So that's Can only part of it. Can you elaborate a little bit about what the equator, how, how, that is, how does the equator equate? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically because um, the hotter weather uh, and colder weather. So the closer you are to the equator, you have hotter weather. Uh, and it's only if uh, you're there up until the age of 15. Uh, so the younger you are uh, during those first 15 years, obviously you're younger. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the warmer. The, the warmer you are during those first 15 years, 
the yes. less likely you are to get MS. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, because I, I also, under from what I understood in some of the reading that I've done, is that there's a very high percentage in Ireland. Mm. And it's that, it's, uh, Ireland's actually further north than we are. Mm -hmm. so that, That's it's the part of it. heat and, and the less, think of that rainy, less hours cold. of sunshine per day. Right. Wow. And there's a vitamin D connection yeah, of some exactly. kind. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. And that's something I've never, I'd never heard of that. So thank you for sharing that piece of that. Um, and like you said, so there's a high uh, per capita in Vermont. Um, and like you said, anybody can get it, but there tend to be more women. Mm -hmm. So what um, should people know about uh, you mentioned children have it. I imagine sometimes with any disease, you have it younger, you don't get diagnosed till later. So let's start talking about um, symptoms and diagnosis. I guess you can kind of put those together because you're going to talk about symptoms when you talk about diagnoses. But sure. um, what kind of symptoms start ar arising for people who discover they have MS? So the most common symptom that we see in everyone is fatigue and that's in over 80% of those who are diagnosed with MS. And I'm not talking about feeling tired all the time, uh, not feeling sleepy. I describe MS fatigue as walking through quicksand with lead weights on your arms and concrete shoes and mm. being forced to walk through it constantly. So that's a little disgusting. Describer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good description. I can feel the, the weight of that. Yeah. So that's what MS fatigue, fatigue. is like. Mm -hmm. So fatigue is going to be present. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, numbness and tingling uh, is very common. And uh, it's similar to uh, when your arm falls asleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's starting to wake up that tingling sensation that you get. Uh, so a lot of people can relate to that. In hands and toes. In and hands and feet. Uh, you can get it just about anywhere, but that's the most common is in your arms and your legs. Mm -hmm. So those are sort of some, anything you want to add, Mary? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, in, in, a, in the experience I had with um, one of my friends, mm -hmm. it was a very, an extreme numbness that actually mm -hmm. interfered with walking. Oh, too. Yeah. So it can uh, does mobility. And the other mm -hmm. one was um, the eyes. Mm -hmm. It sometimes can affect eyesight. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are other um, common symptoms. Uh, changes in vision, uh, walking mm -hmm. difficulties, as Mary mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of symptoms yeah. <laughs> that yeah. do you we find could so? List. If, and obviously, if any of those kind of things were happening, you'd want to talk with your physician about it or your doctor, um, and they can start. I imagine this is a hard thing to diagnose because you know I've heard other conditions that start with these these uh, mm -hmm. symptoms. So, um, how is that process usually? How does that go with diagnosis? How do they really narrow it down? Is there a blood test or anything specific? Unfortunately, there's no blood test for MS. Uh, blood tests are done to rule out other things that are possible. Uh, but uh, MRI is done often. Uh, there are newer techniques with MRI that are helpful, uh, but there's no official, uh, this test proves that you have a yeah. MS. And so a lot of it is a clinical diagnosis, and so that means a history and a physical done by a doctor. Uh, and you have to take the time to be with that physician or that um, provider and really go through your history and go through a physical exam and mm -hmm. so there may be things that as you go through that you start saying oh yeah these other things happen and they can start putting the pieces together right yeah um, I imagine that can be frustrating but I can imagine that once having a diagnosis can be uh, a sense of relief in, in a sense that you what can you do then or I right. ask that question is it what happens after diagnosis so after diagnosis, at least you have uh, a chance to make a plan and uh, there's no cure for MS, but there are uh, modifying therapies. Uh, so there are treatments that we use. Uh, there are a lot of symptomatic treatments that are used for MS in addition to the modifying therapies. So there are 14 uh, therapies that are FDA approved now and that's only been since 1993 wow. so wow. <laughs> we uh, haven't had them for long but 
Uh, those therapies are um, injections uh, or infusions, so through the IV uh, or uh, pills. There are three pills that can be taken, and what those do is they try to slow the progression of MS down and try to decrease the number of uh, what we call relapses. So with MS, you often have a process where you get symptoms and then you're doing fine for quite some time and then you get what's called a relapse and okay. you get symptoms again. Yeah. So, so before you go too far, I, I wanted to mention earlier on that there are some specific different types of MS. Right. Can you talk briefly about those? Sure, there are four types of MS that are considered now. Uh, the first type is called CIS or uh, CIS. It's I'm like going to blank. Clinically isolated syndrome. Oh, good, you got it. <laughs> I do have it. Um, and um, so clinically isolated syndrome is essentially the first onset of symptoms that could be MS. So it's not officially MS yet, um, but it looks mm -hmm. like it could be in the future. Mm -hmm. And So they'll treat those symptoms and see what happens. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a high risk group and a low risk group in there. And you can be high risk for going on to MS and low risk for n not necessarily going on to MS. And so they'll treat you a little differently depending on whether you're high risk or low risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one type, the CIS, and then mm -hmm. uh, other specific? So uh, the next type is relapsing remitting MS. So we talked a little bit about that where you have uh, relapses and remissions of your symptoms. It's the most common type of MS. More than 85% of patients who are diagnosed have this type. Mm -hmm. And the next type is primary progressive. And this is actually the one type where men are more common than women. And primary progressive is actually the type that doesn't have remissions. So Keeps. they just keep adding symptoms mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and move forward in their disease without those remissions. Okay. And then finally, there's secondary progressive MS. And that is generally when you had relapsing remitting to start with. Mm -hmm and then you develop a progressive okay. yeah. type yeah. after. So it can go in many different ways. Mm -hmm. That's the whole unpredictable that you mentioned in the very beginning, right. so yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I was just thinking about too when you were talking about symptoms and, and types of diseases, before I forget to ask, is it hereditary in any sense? It's not. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some genetic factors that are thought to possibly play a role, but we have nothing that says that it's passed down from parents to kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just curious. Yeah, because I'd, I'd actually heard that there is some thought that it might be, but it's more like what it is, one of my understand from um, uh, one of the doctors that uh, I had talked to was that it's more what's being passed down is that tendency to have other autoimmune disorders. And that could be anything from psoriasis to lupus things like that. So it's maybe the in kind of family. things that the doctor would be looking at yeah, in that history. Yeah, because they are kind of related, mm -hmm. you know, so it's interesting. Autoimmune, right. yeah. Um, so you've talked about the types of diseases, uh, the, the four types of MS, um, mm -hmm. and that they are all, though, they all share this chronic, um, not a cure, but there's treatments. So um, again, you were, you, I kind of swung you back, but you were talking mm -hmm. more about treatments. Um, so you had talked about the infusions and the mm -hmm. pills and these kind of things to kind of slow, if any progression is going to happen, that slows it down. Right. And then you, you were going on to talk about maybe symptomatic treatments. And right, so symptomatic treatments uh, can be um, anything from acupuncture to physical therapy, uh, um, medications, uh, to um, psychotherapy for depression and anxiety. Um, 
We have uh, lots and lots of things that are involved in symptomatic mm -hmm. treatment. Sure, and that's going to be mm -hmm. tailored to each individual's uh, <coughs> Absolutely. experiences. Yeah. Since we're talking about treatment, and you mentioned physical therapy, and I'm, I'm sure that a lot of that could be um, outpatient, inpatient home care. So yeah. let's talk about Franklin County Home Health Agency and some of the ways that home health and hospice can help individuals um, mm -hmm. who have MS and had yeah, some there, stories to share. There are a lot of different ways and uh, we, we routinely take care of people every day with MS in, in Franklin County. Sometimes it's a short-term thing, especially if somebody has the relapsing remitting, they might, when they have a relapse, they may uh, lose mobility, uh, lose strength, um, and they need to regain that in-home physical therapy is in order. Um, also occupational therapy, when that happens, how do you know, an occupational therapist can go in and, and, and help somebody figure out, well, how do I reset up my house to make it easier for me to get around, especially if the person has suddenly found that they now need to use a wheelchair um, or a walker, that type of thing. It's a big change to it's navigate change. by yourself. What kind right. of changes do I need? And, and sometimes notes. there could be other um, issues with hands and things like that that might make eating difficult. So there are a lot of different things that the occupational therapist can go in. Um, one of the other, uh, one of the visits I went on early in my career at mm -hmm. Home Health was with a man who had um, had MS for quite a while. And he had gotten to the point where he's having trouble swallowing. And that is something that does happen, um, especially in later stages of a lot of diseases. And that's when our speech language pathologists can help. And it seems funny because it's like, don't, aren't they the ones that teach my kids how to talk right? Um, but it's, what it is is there are two different things that a speech language pathologist works on. One is the actual language, and the other is the actual physical, physicality of the throat, and that's where the swallowing comes in. Yeah. So, so a lot of therapies, yeah. um, mm -hmm. uh, social work. Oh yeah, social work too. Um, I know our social workers are, great advocates for their clients with um, MS and uh, when mobility becomes an issue and you've got a house with you know six stairs up to the front door how do you get in and out um, and I've several times have helped the, our our staff with getting using our camera to take some pictures so that the person can qualify for help from I think it's from is it from the MS Society that helps mm -hmm. with the ramps mm -hmm. yeah the MS Society will help with funding for ramps Type of thing. So a so. social worker can help someone access those resources yeah. that might be available for them. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you for sharing. And talk a little bit about hospice or palliative care and how that might play a role. Uh, well, the palliative care again, um, you know, as the disease progresses, you know, somebody may find themselves on palliative care because, depending on the individual, pain could be a big part of um, their symptoms, and uh, sometimes it's difficult to control pain. Sure. Uh, especially, you know, we've all heard the headlines, nobody wants to take any opioids if they can avoid mm -hmm. it, especially mm -hmm. long term. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are the other ways? And you mentioned the acupuncture, which is a, a great way to, for somebody with a chronic condition to control pain. Yeah. Um, so, hospice, I, I don't, um, I guess, talk to Alicia about this, but my understanding is that it's, it's not going to be the MS in it as, the disease itself that is going to um, bring you to an end of life, but something else that comes up, um, whether it's cancer or um, like a failure to thrive kind of situation. That yeah, makes sense. This sounds like this is a, a collection of symptoms that could lead to mm -hmm. other things. And, right. um, and hospice, to just redefine and remind folks, is a, a wonderful program that serves a whole family and individual faced with end of life situations. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you could see that if that was the case here, that would be appropriate. But it yeah. sounds like the things you were mentioning were more um, short-term uh, mm -hmm. situations well, to help an individual cope with the uh, In some cases, yeah, again, the relapsing remitting would lend itself to that shorter term. But mm -hmm. some of them uh, could be, we could be in there providing LNA support, um, care attendance to help the family with meal preparation, things like that, mm -hmm. skilled nursing. When, when the disease has progressed, uh, especially to the point of somebody being on palliative care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we could keep them at home and yes. safe in their own home with all right. these support that yeah. Franklin County Home Health can offer. Good. Um, go ahead. I was just going to add that I think uh, anyone with 
a progressive type of MS should have palliative care involved. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Uh, let's talk about some of the other resources, uh, some national, even local, and are there support groups? Are there sure. uh, other alternative uh, groups? So one of the best resources I can recommend is the National MS Society. Uh, our local chapter uh, is uh, located in Williston, but the online uh, is nmss.org and um, they have resources um, that are available to anyone with MS and uh, they have uh, navigators that you can contact and call and uh, you can say I'm looking for a support group or you can say I'm looking for help to build a ramp and they'll point you in the right direction. So they're really helpful. Good, that's great. So in your county, what's available here? They can call the navigator. I like that term, the navigators, mm -hmm. that's yeah. great. Yeah, and what about, um, Mary, you've done a lot of fundraising, I know, in the past for, yeah. for MS. Yeah, as a family, we've, um, as a result of the people that we do know with MS, sure. uh, we, my sister, um, one of my older sisters had started doing this bike ride years ago. I mean, I, she's done it way more years than we have, but we've done it for six years now. And uh, it's actually the one that's in New Jersey from, it's from, actually, from uh, if anybody knows New Jersey, <laughs> it's from Cherry Hill to the seashore. Okay. So we are kind of, we don't ride back the second day, we stay <laughs> on the seashore at the beach. That sounds smart. Which, where we have family, and yeah. it's a nice time for the family to get together, and, and we have a, a good time as the sisters doing this as a thing, and it's also, um, it's just really amazing to get, be involved in something that large. This is a, this is a bike ride, it's a 75 miles from Cherry Hill to the, the seashore, and it involves a, and just, a whole, practically half the state of resources. Yeah. There are local policemen that are directing all of the traffic. Oh, yeah. There are volunteers manning uh, refreshment stations and things like that because it's 10,000 people riding bicycles everywhere from these, I call them the crazies, you know, the ones that <laughs> they, they let go at six o'clock in the morning and then, and then they, they're done in two hours. Yeah. <laughs> to, there's this one little old one ancient Chinese lady that, that does it, has They're done trying. it for years, yeah. and she yeah. just sort of trolls, That's great. trolls one on her little bike, so. And all those people there to support and help raise yeah, money and torture. Yeah, and people and, you cheer know, as you go along the lines and yeah. things like that, so. And then it's, Alicia mentioned um, some of these treatments just being in the early 90s, it's, it shows, so there's hope for a lot of new things coming out, and that's made possible with that kind of support and care when people yeah. uh, keep working toward um, yeah. new hope and, and new, you know, treatments yeah. for folks. I think that's wonderful. Just in the past five years, is, uh, less than five years, have been the oral medications. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And prior to the oral medications, you ha your only choices were injections or infusions, mm -hmm. um, both of which involve needles. And if you're needle phobic, yeah. that's a real yeah. big problem. Yeah, well, that's good. Because yeah. uh, they were, I think they, some of the ones that they start you out on are daily injections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, good. Um, anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up talking about MS? And, and I want to talk with Mary a little bit about some things that are happening in Franklin County Home Health. But before we close, um, something else that you'd like to share that you might not have had time for? Oh, just quickly, the in terms of fundraising, there's always local fundraising as well. So you don't have to do the big 75-mile right, bike ride. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, there's check out always, the website. Check yeah. out the website. There's always local walks yeah. that are happening as well. There's Burlington Walk and other places around the state that we do mm -hmm. walks and even uh, I this past year did um, the 50 mile uh, I volunteered for it I didn't walk it myself oh, but the volunteers <laughs> but we need the many volunteers many events. Yeah. we need for everything yeah. so if that's you can't another way do to the get walk involved. that's another way to get True. involved absolutely yeah. the Great. Burlington walk is usually in April isn't it it is. Yeah. It's great. Something to look forward yeah. to. So it's coming up in just a couple weeks. Yeah. Well, thank you both for, for talking about um, multiple sclerosis and shedding some light on it. And I hope folks will take the time to explore the website and ask people questions. And certainly if there's anybody who um, maybe thought they know somebody, go talk to the doctor right now if there's something mm -hmm. funny going on. So thank you for taking the time today to share that with us. Thank you, Alicia and Mary. And Mary, speaking of events and things coming up in the next four minutes here, if you could uh, give us some highlights of what, frankly, County Home Health has coming up. 
Well, uh, the first thing is coming up in April. April is Healthcare Decision Month, mm -hmm. and there's a group of uh, our providers, um, the hospital, nursing homes, a couple of the nursing homes, uh, different doctor practices, and we're uh, as well as home health, and we're um, promoting uh, for the whole community uh, the use of an advanced directive, which is, uh, and basically we're saying it's who's your person, what's your plan, you know, having somebody who can speak for you when you can, and and we'll be doing a big push on that, so you'll be hearing See a you. lot more yeah. and seeing <laughs> some of that. We also have, for the agency, we've got a great event coming up where we're doing it in, in partnership with the Enosburg Opera House. We're bringing Rusty Deweese to Franklin County. Yay. So come and see the logger May 6th. Tickets are on sale already. Um, and then we also have a children's bereavement seminar coming up on May 18th. Mm -hmm. um, and there'll be more information uh, out about that as well. Yeah. Good. So a lot of things for folks to check into. Mm -hmm. So I just remind everybody who's watching that you can find more information about Franklin County Home Health Agency at our website, www.fchha.org. And of course, we'll put up a link there for information um, about the Multiple Sclerosis Society and the resources you mentioned, as well as uh, you can stay tuned with us on all the events that are coming up by friending us on Facebook. And we look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, you can call us at 527-7531. And again, thank you for watching today and be well.